Okay. Coin flip at 15. Okay, I can hear you fine, and I can... Can you hear me? I can hear you fine. Okay. All right, I think we're okay. Thank <coughs> you, Ryan. Whatever it was, it is all corrected. <coughs> we're good. Yep, we mm -hmm. can hear each other. <laughs> kind of makes you feel good because they call you talent. Okay, <laughs> talent, stand by like nobody else has any talent. Or anything. Well, they're 21 and 1. Yep. Oh, I put 21 and 1. And that's 20 1 1. I put 21 1. Do, 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 do. Yes. Uh. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> what is that, a little bit? That's Ray we're hearing then, you think? I don't know. I thought it was Ray. Mm -hmm. but. The wind is like our air conditioning, though. It feels I good. Know. <laughs> In there, it uh, was a little cold. It feels good here. Right. Well, we were hoping when our friends were here that it hit like 80 or something, so they go in the pool. Oh, yeah. A little chilly today. <clears throat> Look at the difference in fan support. <laughs> wow. And that's the one that's furthest away? They're both really far. They're both yeah. four hours away. Okay. Um, yeah. But this group brought student buses, three student buses. Uh -huh. So they had an organized effort to fill the stands. Oh, they have three of them. Three student buses. Hey, now I like this close-up. I hope it's this way all the time. Right. Now these are the smallest schools in the states. So. Correct. We are family. <laughs> Fernanda Rojas, is that who you gave? Uh, yeah, she's their leading scorer. We are family. Soccer rules, in case we ever have to look anything up. Which I wouldn't think that you know all the rules. Coaches know all the rules. <laughs> I hope I do, right? Any I should after that many years. <laughs> top uh, rule is any whistle that goes against your team is wrong. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and there's no such thing as a coach's box. I should be able to go up and down the sideline. You should. <laughs> uh, can they just stand in front of their bench? You can see the painted lines. Oh, yeah, I see it from one edge. Right. Okay, a little bit past their bench. Yeah, and there's, um, there's actually a post. It looks like they have... I don't know what those things are, but... Yeah. There's the coin flip. Let's see who will start. Oh, there you go, way over on the side. You ever need binoculars? I got up here. here. Okay. We got Harry Carey and Eat on the air. <laughs> Did he really do that? Yeah. <laughs> Along about the seventh inning, he started to sway a little bit from all the Budweiser's. Uh, <laughs> that's what the um, the seventh inning stretch is all about. He probably had to use the restroom yeah. afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Get other people to sing now. Did he sing it the whole time he broadcast, and now they well, dishonor it with someone else? They do, it. yeah. He did it all live all the time, every game when he was alive. Oh, wow. Not at the start. They didn't notice. One day, one of the producers noticed that uh, he was singing along during oh, so the show. So they put a mic on him, and ever since then, they... Oh, it became tradition.
Kennedy. It allows him to keep the ball, but here's a dangerous situation. Whoa. Ball just hit the very top of the net and bounced to the right. Yeah, that's another great shot from distance from Chris. We saw her hit one in the first five minutes, and here she is again. It's the equivalent of a three-point shot um, in basketball. It off-balances the defense. Yep. Here comes the goal kick again. And Pickett will get the ball right back into the center circle. And there was Newton, the sixth grader, winning the 50-50 the, the ball. But here we go with Pickett in a dangerous situation again. Stymied, oh. though, by the, um, by the Falcons. Well done. Country Day on the attack. Once again, that is Bain. Peyton Cruz. Working the near sidelines. That's where you, you have to play Peyton Cruz's feet for her to be effective. The other team has such a size advantage on that sixth grader, but she's been super effective with the ball at her feet. It's hard to believe she's 13 playing I against 18-year-olds. Her <laughs> daughter has a chance to start real soon. <laughs> yeah. They start them pretty young. There's the ball once again to the near side. Country Day in their offensive zone. Fans starting to get riled up once again. Pickett controlling it. Pick it to the far side, but the ball's knocked. And you see her using her left foot. I think that's why FSU is so interested in them. Just a side note, the ACC is the strongest women's soccer conference. And for her to be a recruit signing with Florida State, who was the champions of the ACC and in the Final Four, uh -huh. it says a lot about her ability. Wow. So she's been around the sport all her life, being a coach's kid. Uh -huh. You're talking about Pickett, right? Oh, yes, yeah. yes, she yeah. has. Yeah, being a coach's kid, she's uh, grown up with it. That's probably why, where she gets her tactical knowledge. You can see with her runs off the ball tactically, she just seems light years ahead of the other kids on the field. So um, I guess that whole um, adage, the coach's son or daughter is always going to be the smartest player. Yeah. Look at the uh, Mannings, right? Right. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's a good example. Yeah, they're all gym rats. You wouldn't call them gym rats here. They're just field rats. For sure, for sure. The ball will be played in. Palmer Trinity has it, as you can see, going from our right to our left. But they just can't get anything going at their end of the field. Yeah, they're really stretched out. They're really stretched out. And if they don't link up when that ball goes into their target forward, um, it's going to be a long day. They'll chase if they can't they maintain possession. So let's hope they make adjustments. Lead. Yeah. one nothing. Country Day has the lead. On the That's attack it. again. Pickett with a diving save by Bailey Evans. I continue to be impressed with Bailey Evans. Being a goalkeeper myself, I know how hard it is um, to get set when balls are crossed in and you're six. And um, the fact that she's set and able to react in, in such a short range situation um, shows, shows why she's going to play college soccer. Palmer Trinity beat uh, Samuel Sheck Hillel seven to nothing. So they had their offense going in the regional quarterfinals. And since then, they've scored five, two, and seven. So they've scored a lot in the postseason. Yeah, they have. They've, they've had um, a different track, so to speak, in the southern part of the state. So, um, But the Spartans of St. John Country Day, they're just the class of the 1A right now. Um, I, I just want to go back to in time. Uh, the, the Falcons had the chance. Their target, Medina, didn't turn with the ball but linked up with the midfielder. And look, now they have possession. So they're adjusting to the speed of play very well. Yeah, they're getting a little more action at their end of the field right now. As you can see on the far sidelines, a fight for the ball. Yeah, Medina, I can see why she plays target. She's a good athlete. She's getting behind here. She causes a corner. That's great. She penetrated um, with skill and, uh, and athleticism, and now we see the Falcons with their first corner kick of the game. Okay, so they'll be from the far corner. Way as far away from us as you can possibly be. I know. It appears to be Emily Ekblom taking it, and she's a right-footed kicker. She's going for a direct service into the box. It was dangerous. Good play on defense to keep that ball from being a threat. It really is. You know, one of the adjustments all the teams have to make when they come to USF is um, getting used to playing on a wider field. In high school, the fields are um, 65 yards wide, and here we see the maximum 80 yards wide. So it's going to affect their corner service. Pickett, not in a good position to score, so she turns around and gets a kick right back there. You saw the double team there, didn't uh, you? Yep. Yeah, they made that adjustment. Um, they're covering personality. 
I, I, it looks like they might be playing with the sweeper. She comes over and, and helps out her, her teammate with Pickett. You know, Carson Pickett is to be commended a number of ways. I mean, she has the disability of just the, the one arm, and uh, she doesn't, you know, but of course she can't use it in soccer, but I mean, she obviously grew up with uh, with a little uh, problem. That was, here's a oh, great ball in. Oh, oh, great goal, great goal. Mallory Bain with a perfect service from the right side. And what a finish. That's great box organization. We've seen it all night from the Spartans. They have been so organized in the box. So it goes up 2 nothing. It's hard oh. to see who finished. Um, but all night long they've been penetrating on the flanks and their box organization to finish the crosses has just been second to none. I'm really, really impressed with the discipline that they have. The Spartans really, really have shown that they're organized. Goal by Ellen Christ. One of the players from Palmer Trinity was shaken up a bit. But it's a 2-0 lead, 11.25 or 11.24 left to play in the first half. Well, we're going to see a kickoff here, and it'll be interesting to see if the um, Falcons will go direct on this or if they'll look to maintain possession on this kickoff. But that was just a great goal by the Spartans. Very impressive. Well, they're very aggressive. They're choosing to maintain possession, then a long ball into space. They're asking a lot of Medina to win those balls. There's the ball with St. John's Country Day moving across the center line. On the near side, that is Megan Rogers. Rogers fighting off a defender. She has a double team, turns, centers it, and it is still alive. They seem to be really attacking that right side. Maybe Coach Pickett got some information that there's a difference in speed on, on um, the, the Falcons' left defense or right defense. So that might be why. Another save by Bailey Evans. Evans will get the ball in play. That's a good punt by Evans. That's a and good we have a whistle. Piers Fernanda Piers. Rojas, senior for Palmer Trinity. Rojas scored two goals in their win over Melbourne Central Catholic. That was the difference. They won it 7-6 to six on her two goals. Rojas is a special player herself. Um, she's going to attend George Washington University and um, has kind of been the captain, the anchor for this Palmer Trinity team. So the ball's still in Palmer Trinity's end of the field. Lane Poquette gets the ball for Country Day. Nice turn. Pick it with the whistle. Appears it's interesting to be that they have the team sitting on the other side so that nobody, you know, they can't be harassed by the fans or the media or anybody like that. They're just concentrating on the game. Yeah, it seems to be a safer way to go about it, especially uh -huh. with all these uh, St. John's fans. I, I bet Palmer Trinity is happy for that bench location. Get a little rabid, these fans do. Annabelle Danen gets it to the goalie who kick it out of bounds near side. Uh, I think that she mishit that. I know Evans would like to do that over again, but that's okay. She needs to quickly get it re to regroup. Only about 10 minutes left in the first half. Ball with Country Day. Megan Rodgers continues to impress me. Coach Pickett told me to keep an eye on her, and I, oh, I can see why. <laughs> She's so dangerous in 1v1 situations. What a great goal by Megan Rogers. To be 3-0 in the first half, um, that's just, that's where you want to be. <laughs> Rogers with 19 goals on the year. Becomes the third Spartan to score today. And Rogers um, started as a right forward, but you see her kind of coming out of midfield a bit, dropping back. Uh, but she is effective wherever they put her on the field. What a great individual of effort. That's her right there, number seven. Obviously a bit winded, but they're not going to give her a rest right now. I don't think so. <laughs> I do not think that she'll get a rest. Halftime is soon. 9.51 to go. And here's the ball in play once again. Palmer Trinity still can't just seem to get it going offensively. So they're going to get the ball to the other end and see if they can get themselves a break. 
There's Rogers again. Yeah, Bain to Rogers. We said that all day. They just connect very well together. Hey, you, mentioned, you mentioned how you coached Bain. Did you coach Rogers too? No, no. Bain was on an Olympic development team on the Florida State team. And two years ago, I had the opportunity to um, work with her at region camp. Um, and uh, she was certainly a player that the regional staff for the Southeast region had an eye on. She got to play in the regional pool game. Oh. So. Anybody else on these uh, two teams that... Uh, had that honor? Well, certainly Pickett. Um, she not only represented her state, but regionally, and I think she's had national team um, opportunities as well for her age group. So those are the two that I'm sure of. Annabelle Danen on the shot attempt. Kara McCurry with the save. Yeah, that's her second save of the day. She's taking her time. There's no hurry for her team with a 3-0 lead. 67 saves on the season. You know, that's not a lot for a season, though. It doesn't seem like it's a lot, does it? Yeah, they really they haven't been tested um, by the majority of their opponents, but um, they have been in some competitive matches which have prepared them for their success today. 26 games, 67, about three, about three saves a game. Number 23, that is Camilla Masson. Here comes Palmer Trinity. Yeah, there's Rojas. She's one of the keys. She played Medina, the target. But again, she's turning, and it's so difficult. But it works this time. On the attack, but it's knocked out of bounds. It's so impressive how the defenders for the um, St. John's team uh, just kind of um, gather to the ball. When they see, they, they send numbers to the um, ball, and they really limit the opportunities for the forwards. Lots of action athletically on this uh, campus here today driving around a little bit <clears throat> track and field team practicing softball team at a game baseball teams practicing oh it makes me miss my time on college campuses <laughs> oh yeah i'll bet <laughs> springtime or late winter and stuff every all the sports are going yeah and that's what all these student athletes are hoping to be a part of mm -hmm. i think on this field they they all are, are competing and trying to get better and maybe have an opportunity to be on a college campus as a student athlete well, the Florida State coach is here today, and I'm sure if you actually had time to look around, you might see others as well. And I'm sure USF is represented here somewhere. Yes, Denise Shilty Brown, I'm sure, will be here, or and her husband, Chris Brown. They've done a great job with that program there in the Big East. I didn't know I was talking so loud. The Florida State coach just looked up here. He heard him being talked about. <laughs> yeah, he's um, Mark Akorian. He's just done a great job. I can't um, say enough about the success he's had with that team since he's taken it over. Here's Country Day leading at 3 nothing. There's Bro. Bain on the ball again, making another great decision. Ellen Crist, who has one of the goals. Oh, There's, what a oh, save. Nice save. Here's Bain, though, from distance. What a great shot. Oh, just wide. But that was low. They fixed that, fixed that problem with the yes, ball they sailing. Have, they've gotten it down a little bit. It's now sailing wide instead of high. They're getting used to the win, but I also think that um, Palmer Trinity is getting a little tired. Um, they've been chasing. They haven't had possession, and, and so their pressure isn't as good as it was in the beginning of the game. So Chris, who has one goal, 121 goals on the year. This but, being, well, she's got another year yet. Yeah. There's Rogers. Galenef along with Teresa Patterson at the 1A State Girls Championship. Blasting all weekend. Yeah, it's the first of five games. That's right. You're going to be busy. <laughs> yes. Very busy. But it's just such an honor to be able to do this and watch all these talented athletes compete. So how did Steinbrenner do this year? They got to the regional finals and lost to um, Jenkins. Oh. And uh, George Jenkins from Lakeland, they're the number three team in the country. Oh, my. Yeah. They actually have two Florida State recruits as well. Oh, do they? Two really? seniors wow. that will go to Florida State. They so. get around the state pretty good. Oh, yeah. I think they kind of have a fence on the state right now. Bain. You're not Locked seeing the best it. players leave, and that's a good thing for our yeah, programs. That's good. That is good. You hate to see them leave out of state like you did. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Florida State didn't have soccer. I would have oh. loved to play there. That was back in the uh, the dinosaur times. <laughs> Poquette gets it past the official. As you can see, just under five minutes remaining. Bain once again. Bain, another underclassman, a junior for Coach Pickett. I like the uniforms, I like that powder blue stripes. 
Yeah, when you think powder blue, you have to think of uh, North Carolina, another uh, ACC team, right? Watch them on TV in basketball. Great ball. There's Great ball. ball. Megan Rogers with a great goal. She showed her skill there. She wasn't open with the timing of her run, but she actually used her technical ability to off-balance a defender and hit that ball in left-footed. Very, very impressive by Rogers. Four nothing. I'd love, to, I'd love to be a fly on the wall um, in both coaches' halftime talk. I'd like to see, you know, what their strategies will be going into the second half. So you think that uh, Country Days? Game plan obviously has been working very well. Yes. Well, when you keep the ball, you usually win. And, and when you keep the ball and you have players that can get behind defenses like Country Day has, um, it's fun to be that coach. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Up for nothing. Country Day, as we've mentioned. Well, we haven't actually mentioned that Pickett is Florida's class 1A player of the year. I mean, we mentioned that she's gone to Florida State, but she's the 1A player of the year. And I guess that makes her, do they then select an overall player for the they year? They do. Um, the, uh, actually, the Florida Dairy Farmers Association selects um, uh, state players of the year for each classification and then an overall player of the year. Okay. What's her chances on that? Very, very good. Very good. <laughs> she hasn't scored, which is kind of unusual. Your team's got four goals and she doesn't have any. But I'm sure at this point she doesn't... Uh, doesn't care about that. Well, she's been so involved in each aspect of, of every goal um, because Palmer Trinity always has to be aware of where she is. So they're, she's dragging defenders with her with her runs off the ball. Sarah Stankert for St. John's Country Day. Coach Pickett's gone to his bench to get some underclassmen in. Mm -hmm. um, you saw Pickett leave and Bain leave. Stankert's just a freshman. Now sixth graders. Seventh graders, eighth graders, they're only eligible in the smaller schools? Well, it has to be a school that has all grades. And okay. so most public schools, um, you have separate middle and high schools. So private schools, they are eligible. If they're, you know, a, okay. a good enough athlete to make that team, that varsity okay. team in tryouts, they get to play. So you can win, like, seven state championships if you, you start could. as a sixth grader. <laughs> wow. You could. You very well could. And speaking of a sixth grader, we see Abby Newton. Newton, number 20 for St. John's Country Day. There's a whistle. Yeah, that's a foul. Newton was just about ready to try and score there. She really was, and she's such a skillful player. So fun to watch. Her quickness on and off the ball really separates her from her peers. No, I don't know if it's significant or not, but why does she wear orange shoes? <laughs> Probably because she likes them. Okay. I thought there might be some special reason that... You know, it's a personality thing. I find the flashier players wear the flashier shoes, and defenders usually are in all black. It's just the way it is. Okay. <laughs> Making some kind of fashion statement in well, the sixth grade year. You know, if you watch the World, Women's World Cup this summer, France had the best shoes, and they played with a lot of flair. So yeah. there might be some kind of link there, huh? Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Nope. It's going to be knocked away. That was well won by Palmer Trinity. Did you say you played against Mia Hamm? Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. um, a couple times. Um, on, uh, But in college, we were a first-year program at Mercer, and we went to UNC. And um, I'm proud to say that she scored a hat trick on me. <laughs> they are so talented. You're they in the defensive record books. Huh? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the only time Mercer probably ever played UNC. Okay. But I've had better results when we played. Um, our state teams played against each other, and um, the, the score was much closer. <laughs> There's Madeline Schultz in the corner. Can't quite get it going. Under two minutes to go. You know, you were talking about facilities earlier. There's no locker rooms they go to at halftime here. No, there's not. And um, I'll be curious to see. I see two tents set up. They might be the meeting areas um, for the teams. Well, when they came in, we can't see it on the screen now, but they came in from the corner like they were coming from a building of some kind over here. Yeah, it's the new athletic building here at USF. And um, um, actually, um, over the last couple of years, you've seen a lot of money and support to upgrade the facilities here at USF. Four nothing. One minute to go. You can see the game plan um, is consistent. Coach Pickett um, has kind of ingrained into this team, no matter who's on it, that the priority is to keep the ball possession-oriented with those three central midfielders. Um, you're seeing great passing angles, and it doesn't matter who's on the field. The strategy is being carried out, which yes. is impressive. They've gone four or five deep. 
They really have. There's the ball into the other end. Less than a minute left to go. You notice he's kept his defenders in, though, and here is Harding. She's um, one of the defenders that started the game. She's helping to um, put the ball into attack. You know, defenders is such a general term. They can, just like hockey, I mean, you can score as a defender. You don't just play defense. Yes, it's such a fluid game. Posi the positions are just priorities, but they're definitely not um, the limits as to what you need to do or get to do on the field in a game. Liz Rozier couldn't quite control it. As the first half draws to a conclusion. That's an impressive attacking um, exhibition by the Spartans. I'm really impressed with the build, their ability to get behind the Palmer Trinity defense consistently. Well, Palmer Trinity has some regrouping to do right now. Down 4 nothing on goals by Mallory Bain, Ellen Chris, and two from Megan Rogers. So you're looking at Country Day, and you figure you're up 4 nothing, and your star player hasn't scored yet. <laughs> well, like I said before, she's so dangerous, and you got to credit her presence on the field um, for those goals because it's created space for her teammates. I know if you asked her what's more important for her to score, for her to score or to get a, a ring, she'd say a ring. Okay. So we're at the break. We're going to take you for a break. It's a 20 minute uh, timeout. We will return with the second half as St. John's Country Day leads Palmer Trinity for zip. I'm Kelly Neff along with Teresa Patterson. That's the first half. We'll see you in the second half.
Yes, one, two, three, four, five, nothing, six, nothing. seven, Here eight, nine, test, ten. Test one, two. Cut it out. Test one, two, test, three, testing, four. One, two, one, two, nothing. Test, testing one, two. Change the channel. Channel two, stay on. Um, test one, two. No, because I'm, testing, testing one, I'm doing two. a patch. Test, 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 one, two, three. One, two, one, now I don't have power on these. Testing, testing, one. testing, testing.
Hello. I don't know if I'm talking too loud. But I can't hear anything yet, but. Yeah, they, if they would have come up and done something if we weren't talking loud enough. I guess they don't give us stats at halftime, huh? So then I'll just keep this ear open and you can keep that ear open and we can okay. hear, hear each other. And these are pretty comfy though compared to the other ones. Yeah, they are. These are real good. <laughs> and as you know, if you keep it up, it yeah. makes it. The microphone, if you, if you, if you it up, it keeps it. Oh, it doesn't? Oh, okay. oh, I didn't know that. So if you have to cough or something? Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Thank, All right. You. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> I guess they'll tell us when to go. Want a frozen French fry? As the second half begins, 4 nothing, as uh, St. John's Country Day has the lead, and they go on the attack right away and score. And there's Pickett's goal. There's Pickett's goal. Mallory Bain um, penetrated on the right side, hit a perfectly angled back cross in. Great timing by Pickett. Nice finish. And um, I guess we answered the question if the win was the reason they, <laughs> they had the lead, huh? Yes, I guess that answered the question real good. Just... 16 seconds into the half, or second half, and there's the second goal of the day for Bain. What a statement that was, wasn't yes. it? <laughs> Boy, put an exclamation point on the first half. Well, um, we see Palmer Trinity with the kickoff and the win. Um, I'm sure they're going to be energized to get something happening here. So Palmer Trinity will play the ball in, but they won't keep it for very long. Yeah, you haven't seen them string together a, a, a number of passes. Mm -hmm. you got to credit the Spartans with that, though. They're just so well coached and so athletic, so skillful. They're, they'd be successful at any classification here this weekend. I think so, too. Pickett's pass wide. Now the ball open at midfield. Pickett. Looks like Keeps they're having alive. Pickett playing an act attacking uh, midfield role, but she still has the athleticism to get behind and overlap her forwards. That was another dangerous chance that she created. There's Bain. 
good just defending. Good defending there. Just missed. They couldn't quite get it to the person in front of the goal. Five nothing. Quickly, the halftime lead extended by St. John's Country Day. Well, here's a Falcon goal kick. And Pickett wins it again. Pickett right in front of the goal. Pass deflected. But it goes right to Ellen. Chris! Oh, what a great shot. What a great shot by Chris. She's been, she's been dangerous all night. You know, when you get in the box and you pull the trigger like that, good things can happen. And maybe that shot would not have gone in. But um, the, the Spartan defenders just kind of on their heels. Uh, I wouldn't credit the defender for that goal. It certainly should, the credit should go to Chris. She's so talented. Chris with two goals so far. Now it's a 6 nothing lead in favor of the Spartans of Coach Mike Pickett. Kelly Neff along with Teresa Patterson. Wow. Those goals came a whole lot quicker than the first two. They certainly did. They certainly did. They had the momentum. Um, and um, what a well-coached team. We always say try to get a kick, uh, try to get a shot on goal within 30 seconds of the kickoff, and they did more than that. Within yeah. 16, they combined with three passes and, and had a beautiful goal and, and, and just took advantage of the momentum. And we haven't even played two minutes of the second half, and they've already gone 4 nothing to 6 nothing, And they're on the attack again. As you can see on our picture that Palmer Trinity trying to mount some kind of an attack. Well, you know, I think the key for Palmer Tr Trinity is to be able to um, have Rojas and Medina combine and keep the ball. They're their best players. Here's a transition, a situation. And Pickett just really has the speed to take advantage of that steal at midfield. And with the ball on the near sideline. As the ball is played in by St. John's Country Day. Well, I'm not sure why they're waiting. Oh, I got substitutions coming in. Yeah. We Every day in the powder blue and white, leading at six to nothing, 35 minutes to go. On the near side, that's KK Harding. Well, you see this system, the 4-3-3 is really helping him maintain possession. Well, combine that with the talent on the field. The Spartans really, really, really have shown that they probably could win this, uh, win a ring in any classification. Pickard with the shot blocked. 
you got to give the Falcons credit. They're not giving up. They're fighting through this whole game. They have so much to be proud of to be here in the state championship for the first time. And yeah. they're playing with intensity. Here's the ball just in front of the net, but it's well, turning around and getting the ball is Abby Ferrer. Goalie comes back out. That's Bailey Evans. Evans will put the ball in play. 34 minutes left to go. Second half. That's a great punt by Evans, isn't it? Directly yeah. to uh, their playmaker, Rojas, who plays a dangerous ball into Medina. This could be trouble. Great play, great play. She keeps her feet. Well done. Saved That's by McCurry. That is fantastic, you know, and it's just only fitting that um, the first ball, that punt from Bailey Evans um, got him in since Bailey Evans has been such an important factor for the success of the Falcons this year. As the Spartans control it offensively. A lot of uh, action at the Palmer Trinity end of the field. St. John's Country Day. 6-2 win over Lakeland Christian in the state semifinals. So both teams scored considerably in the state semifinals at their respective sites. Goals so far, two of them by Mallory Bain, two of them by Megan Rogers, two of them by Ellen Chris. You know, this is the first year, um, um, gosh, in probably two decades, that the semifinals and the finals were not were not at the same site. Oh. So that kind of affects strategy here. Um, in all five games, you're not going to get the opportunity to have a live scouting um, view of your oh. opponent. So um, I, I, I kind of think that we'll see that as a factor as um, these playoffs go on. You know, with Florida being such a long state north to south, it's hard for a team up north, uh, like a St. John's Country Day, to, to send somebody all the way down to scout the other team's state semifinals. Wow, that probably is a six-hour drive, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. It's Just challenging. Don't, don't have the budgets these days to do that. They don't. And, you know, with football, there's film exchange, and it's mandatory by the, I believe, the FHSAA. But none of that um, is is um, mandated in soccer or other sports. I mean, some schools really don't film their games. They don't have the resources to do so. Yeah. Did you guys film all yours? You know, we uh, we did, but it, we relied on parents to do it. We had oh, no sure. professionals, um, but it was certainly a valuable tool. Well done, well done by Pickett. Pickett with the kick. Up, oh, nobody there. So impressive. Not only does she have the speed to get behind defenses, but you're seeing the technical skill. You know, those 1v1 players are so rare, so rare in the women's game. People who have the courage to take players, defenders on 1v1, and she's shown it over and over again tonight. What a special player. Country Day has proven that they are not a one-girl team. Six goals, three different girls, and none of them are your leading scorer for the year. <laughs> yeah, their priority is pretty obvious. Um, attack the flanks, and they're doing it on the right and the left side. Very well-coached group. Ms. Coach Pickett must be proud. Palmer Trinity just playing defensively. I mean, they're just trying to keep the ball away, and they haven't been able to get anything going very much on the attack. You know, they're chasing, and that's going to affect their depth. If you chase the entire game and don't keep the ball, um, it affects your ability to be productive when you're on the ball. Now here comes Country Day on the attack again. Far side on the screen. Now they move to the middle. Oh, that's great help there by um, Annabelle Dannon of Palmer Trinity. Great, great coverage as a defender. She really stopped a dangerous attack. Now Palmer Trinity not able to catch up with the ball. And Country Day still in there, and there's Pickett. Nice little footwork, Pickett. Pickett with the shot, and sails wide. She loves that left foot. <laughs> you know, with my daughter, I want her to I want to start giving her soccer balls at her left foot, because those are special players. You oh, don't okay. have a lot of them, so. Because the ball doesn't spin any differently, does it? Or? Um, you're just, if you're right-handed, you're more likely to be right-footed. And so, you know, players who favor their left are rare. Okay. Makes them special. Obviously, she knows how to do it. There's the ball put in play all the way down past midfield. <coughs> There's Medina again playing that target role, looking to link up with her midfielders. 
I don't think the Falcons have had to play at this speed um, yet this year. Um, the, the, the Spartans have done such a good job of just setting the pace of the game, playing at a fast speed, both athletically and technically, and, and um, Trinity is um, having a difficult time catching up. As the ball at midfield is taken once again, As the oh no, Rojas is down. That could be a big blow for the Falcons. So they don't stop play right away. It gets you a chance to get up. So well, she'll have to be replaced. Or it looks like she's going to tough well, it out. She is, yeah. You know, it's a state championship, and uh, you kind of put it all on the line. One game left, and yep. it's it's your chance to put your stamp on your career. That's right. You can sleep tomorrow, right? That's right. She's a <laughs> senior. I don't think she's coming oh, out oh, unless yeah. her coach drags her out. I would think so. Here comes St. John's Country Day. Near side, ball taken by Stankard. Here once again is Pickett. Sarah Stanker didn't start the game, but gosh, she's been dangerous on the left side. It just shows you the depth that Spartans have. Once again, Country Day leading 6 nothing. Under 29 minutes left to play. Great ball by There's Liz Rozier. Great ball in. Side. Now have a goal kick. You know, being a baseball fan, I know that Palmer Trinity, I don't know how much of a baseball fan, Carl Reuter was a, is a pitcher for the Boston Red Sox organization. He went to Palmer Trinity. Wow. One of their notable alumni. Wow. The I ball. bet they have great baseball in South Florida mm -hmm. as well as soccer. So here's the ball near side. That is Palmer Trinity in the navy blue and white. That's a good ball in, and let's see if they can um, get that final pass. They're just having a hard time finding that final pass to Medina. Maybe if Medina made some runs out of the center of the field, she'd be able to pull out the um, Spartans' defense, pull them apart, and get behind them. The one time that she did get behind, it was a run out to space. There's the Spartan team on the attack. Pass. You know, Coach told us that um, Liz Rozier was going to uh, make an impact off the bench, and she certainly is helping them maintain possession. Now, when you get behind the defense, it's just speed that gets you there. Or it's you know, there's three ways you can get behind. Pure speed um, or technical ability if you off balance uh, an opponent individually. We call those 1v1 specialists. Okay. And the last way is to combine with your teammates by passing. So those are the three principal ways that you find um, players getting behind. Okay. The special kids can do it all three ways. Yeah. And that's what Pickett has. She has well, the ability to do it all three looks ways. Looks like there's a couple other people that might be that special too. Yeah. Again, it's Chris Dara. Uh, St. John's Country Day. Leading at 6 nothing. We're under 27 minutes left to play. Not a lot of time left for Palmer Trinity to mount a comeback, and it's going to have to be a monumental comeback. It would be one for the record books, I think. It looks you know, like we have a Spartan player down with a cramp. At the, one of the referees is tending to it. Meanwhile, we never have mentioned who the referees are. They're all coming from the same area of the state uh, tonight. We have Ken Thomas, Patrick Ayers, Dennis O'Connor, and Wade Winchester from the Florida West Coast High School soccer officials. You probably, being from the Florida West Coast, know these guys. I do. And you know, the FHSAA does a great job of getting in crews that are not in the areas for the um, teams within the, the game. So um, they, they really eliminate the bias. Yeah, you don't want an official saying, our ball. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Too good. All right, we're back to action. Under 27 minutes left. Doesn't look like Country Day is really relaxing in the with a big lead like this. No, and, and here we have one of our sixth graders on the ball making great decisions. It's amazing the depth they have at all ages. You just saw Peyton Cruz, one of the sixth graders on this team for the Spartans. Off the near side. You know, Medina has been really outnumbered with the um, three central midfielders that, uh, that the Spartans have on the field. It's been tough for her. Three talented players, and she is, um, you know, she's been doing her best to keep up. Uh -huh. Sarah Medina trying to get her team back into action. Oh, well That's done. That's her right there, number 14. 
working hard to try and get control. But not able to do it, needs a little help. Spartans on the attack again. Ball goes to Alley Wynn. Well, you know, Coach Pickett has substituted almost freely. Yeah, it's almost like he's preparing for, um, he, he has that wonderful opportunity that you like as a coach where um, everybody gets experience in such a monumental game. So um, enjoying the moment and um, paying off for all the hard hours of practice that they put in. And I see that just about everybody on his team has played in double figure games this year. So he's, it's not like he's just using them tonight. He's used them all year long, probably in good situations where they've learned how to be competitive and have learned how to play in tough uh, environments. Under 25 minutes left. St. John's Country Day going after its third championship. Third championship in uh, actually six years. Well, there's, um, there's the Falcons' go-to player, Rojas, winning that ball. You know, the future looks bright for um, the Falcons, although they're, you know, on the opposite end of, <laughs> of the scoreboard that they want to be. Uh, their target for Medina, she's a young player. She'll be back. She's actually only a sophomore. So although the score's not what they would want to, they would be, they would want to script, um, they have to be excited about their future. They only have five seniors on their entire roster. So you know you're starting at least five underclassmen or more. We have to start more underclassmen in every game. Yeah, it, and, and this is just a great, great experience for them. Um, it's just going to enhance their development as individuals and as a team. Country Day. Not able to mount an attack. Ball goes out of bounds. It'll be played in by the Falcons of Palmer Trinity. The FHSAA. Girls State Soccer Championships on oh. the campus of the University of South Florida in Tampa. And easy to get to, by the way, if you're thinking of coming to any matches this week or the boys are next week. On the near side, there's a little sixth grader there, Peyton Cruz. I'm so impressed with Peyton Cruz. Not only vision, but skill and quickness. I've been talking about her all night. She is a, certainly a player to watch. Oh, here's Medina. She's yep. behind. She has a chance. Let's see if she can capitalize. Oh. oh. Just it, hit the sidebar. It really looked like um, the Spartans' defenders paused. They thought that uh, they thought that Medina was offside. And just that moment, that split set and second allowed her to get behind. I'm sure Coach Pickett um, would like them, uh, if they could do it over again, not to have that pause. <laughs> you got to wait for the whistle. That's yeah. what you coach. Wait for the whistle. Don't make the call yourself. Saw so Medina there looking a little dejected, thinking maybe she was going to get her team on the attack. You know, they, uh, in their only loss, it was 5-1 to one, uh, to uh, Archbishop McCarthy, so they've never been shut out. What a time to experience your first shutout of the year. Well, I believe in uh, Medina's ability. I think with 22 minutes left, you're going to have to um, like their chances not to be shut out this game. 22 minutes. 6 nothing, St. John's. See the action just to the left side of the net. Missed their chance. There is Alisa Detlison. Watches the ball go long. You know, I'm so impressed with um, Coach Pickett's game plan. He really, um, his team consistently plays for crosses and corners. Really, really, um, it's a priority, and it's been successful no matter who he puts on the pitch. Here's the corner kick. Far corner, the farthest one away from ever. She's in the shadows. You can hardly see her over there. <laughs> <laughs> kind of hiding. But now they're getting the offense rolling. They have a lot of courage, you know, um, as a coach when it's a short corner kick and you see it's a 2v2 situation instead of a 2v1, you usually call it off. But Coach Pickett believes in the skill of his team. Oh, there Medina is offsides. She started her run a bit early, and um, her teammate didn't release the ball in time. That's why okay. she got caught in that position. So to be offsides, you have to be 
Only how many people? There has to be two defenders two. between um, you and the goal line, but one of those defenders is always a goalkeeper. Well, usually. Oh. I shouldn't say always. Okay. So the goalkeeper counts as one defender. She does. Okay. Here comes Country Day. Moving the ball. Good footwork. Hey, that was a good move. Wow, she just <laughs> playing her left and right. Again, that, another sixth grader, Abby Newton, showing her skill. There's Rojas with the ball. She's, I can see why she's captain. She's, oh, great ball into yeah, Medina. This go. is dangerous. They're going to score here. Nope. Goal. Or did they? Yep. Yes. Yes, they did. Great goal by Medina. Great goal. You know, um, the Spartans defenders did a great job of pushing her to the right side both times and limiting their angle. And um, their goalkeeper, Kate McCurry, actually came off her line and cut down the angle. But... Uh, Medina caught her moving and as a goalkeeper if you're moving when the shot comes it's very difficult to react and I think that's what happened there for McCurry. Well you kind of thought that uh, Medina might finally get on track. Yeah I I, I was hedging my bet right? Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't it be a shutout? Her first goal obviously is 6-1. 2015 left to play. We're in the second half. This is the 1A state championship. 2A state championship is uh, coming up later and that would be American Heritage Delray. I guess the bowl school, you talk about two athletic schools, and we'll tell you more about them later on, but the state championships that those two schools have won together, holy cow. I know, and you know it's a repeat of this, north versus south, so to speak, uh -huh. um, with a Jacksonville team uh, that benefits from excellent clubs, just like we see here with the Spartans, and they're competing against another team from, Flor um, from south Florida that also has excellent soccer clubs. So, you know, I always say as a high school coach, you're as good as your feeder systems, and that's your club, your club programs. They really develop the players. You as a coach are simply a manager. Is that why, <clears throat> excuse me, is that why the sixth graders are so good at this level? Oh, yeah. I mean, um, they started playing when they were probably three for clubs like First Coast up in the Jacksonville area. And, you know, I always find a relationship with the state cup winners in competitive soccer and um, the high school state championships. I mean, um, if you're a coach and you think that you're the reason that you're players are successful at the high school level you're not getting given credit where uh, credit's due so uh, to speak so you always give credit to the players <laughs> it's like I you know major league baseball managers you're only as good as your players <laughs> Well, you know, we're that's a great analogy. I kind of think of it like the Tampa Bay Rays. Their farm system helps prepare them, right? Yeah, that's so right. It that's does. Exactly the club, right. The club system here is like the farm system. 2015 to go. You can hear right next to us the Country Day folks that are making all kinds of racket. And while they should, their team's up by five goals. You know, this is what you get with high school sports that you don't get with club. I know we were just talking about club. You don't get that school spirit. Uh, you don't get the opportunity to play with multiple ages on the field. You don't get to wear the colors and hear your name in the announcements and see your name in newspapers. So high school is such a, a wonderful opportunity and a lot different than club. Elisa Detlison, you can see right there, one of the sixth graders. I mean, they just look like she should be out like playing hopscotch. I mean, it's it, they just look so young. <laughs> and then... The other lady there, Sydney Monroe. She is a seventh grader, so right there you had seventh grader and a sixth grader yeah. on the start. And in Florida, not a lot of school districts even have middle school soccer. It's just really, really um, relies on the club system to prepare them. They're also technical for now the Spartans. The, you know, the coach must give some kind of input. I mean, <laughs> can't all be the players. You have to. Oh, no, you have to manage them. Sure. You certainly do. And that, that's, I mean, that's the difference between the elite teams and the good teams is coaches that can manage players based on their strengths and weaknesses. But, you know, I don't mean to make it sound like um, the high school coaches don't develop, but you only have them for two months. Mm -hmm. And um, there are club coaches have them for the rest of the year. So. And you've done both. I have. <laughs> I think I've coached on every level. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you're doing this this year because this is fun. Oh, it is. I'm, it's my soccer fix. I really missed it this year. I did, yeah. yeah did you nice go to any match. matches? You? I did. I went to senior night for the Steinbrenner team. Um, we had a player that was the 4A player of the year, CC Gonzalez, and um, I certainly had to be there, wanted to be there to see uh, her be honored by our school. A little emotional, I bet. For sure, but she's going to continue her career at the University of Tampa, so I'll still get to watch her. They're good in soccer, right? Oh, yeah. They've perennially been um, among the top ten in, div in um NCAA Division II programs, and they have a wonderful facility, so it's a good fit for her and a lot of players from our area. Yeah. 
Here are the Spartans still on the attack, leading it 6-1. to one. All the Country Day fans anticipating another state championship. Of course, as you mentioned, the 2A final is going to start at 7.35. So we don't know how much. That's one hour exactly from now. So this one will be over in plenty of time for everybody to get in and out that need to. And what a wonderful facility this is. I see a lighted field in the distance, and, and the teams playing in the next matchup are actually having an opportunity to uh, warm up there. So um, we're just really lucky to be at this fabulous facility, and, yeah. um, and good. thank USF for that. Yeah, huh? good lighting here. It's, it's, you can see well. There's the attack. But no, going to be broken up. Returned all the way to midfield. Uh, Mallory trying to. Get to the one did. They put a lot of faith in Medina again, serving the ball into her 4v1. Four defenders for the Spartans and one attacker for the Falcons in Medina. It's That's tough. Fair. Those are tough odds. Yeah, they would, yeah. You're not gonna get through all of those. I don't think Abby Wombat could get through all those. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the ball near side. Right in front of where we are, and the ball goes out of bounds. 17 and a half minutes left to go. Time running out on Palmer Trinity. Going to have to score a little more quickly than they did last time. Inbounding it, Rojas. Nobody there. Well, they're so Steinberg are one of the biggest schools around? No, actually, they just um, opened three years ago. So our first year, we didn't even have a senior class. So oh, wow. our, our student population has grown, um, you know, as the school's been open, so to speak. Um, we're 4A now. We were 4A last year, but they reclassified. 5A yeah. is the largest in this oh. new classification. So okay. we actually moved up a classification. But the way the FHSAA um, district the schools, it, it, the, the label is still 4A. Oh, still 4A. It used okay. to be all the way up to 6A. Okay. Yeah, they keep changing that all the time. I, like in football, there's eight classes. And soccer, there's five. You know, it changes rivalries. That can be good and bad. Yes, it can. <laughs> Here comes uh, Palmer Trinity. They're going to be able to keep the ball at their end. No, it doesn't look like it. On the attack is Sarah Stankard. Ball knocked back to the other end of the court, other end of the field. So the teams for the next game, oh, well, there's a field over there. Are they practicing way over? Yeah, yeah, two fields away. That's a little of a hike. Yes, it is. <laughs> wow, it looks like it's in another county. Great yeah. facility here. They have the baseball field. They have the softball field. They have the track and field. They have the dome right over here, the football field, obviously. You know, when I think of the facilities here, I think of Leroy Selman. He's oh, sure. such an integral part of, one, bringing 1A football to the Bulls, and two, for all the fundraising necessary to have the facilities to compete in the Big East, one of the elite conference, conferences. And as you know, he passed away this year. Yes. Yeah, yeah he's, uh, he's quite an integral part of this campus, this community. Yeah, his presence will be felt wow. forever here. They're taking out all the starters? Okay, you're seeing, yeah, you're seeing um, Coach Pickett. He's putting his starters back in. Um, I think it's, you know, to give them a chance to be honored by the fans. You can hear the applause in the background. Ah, putting them all back in. I thought he was taking some of them out. No, They've already been out. No, they, he, he's giving them a chance to, um, to end the game on the field. Here comes Pickett. Her shot is going to sail wide. She's on the field for three seconds and, and uh, finding scored. a way to, Tries to, score. <laughs> to hit a ball with her left foot. <laughs> well, she is trying to at least score one goal in the state championship game. Yeah. Goals under, um, I guess, the underplay, what sh the impact she's had here tonight. Her presence has been felt on every third of the field. And that's her right there. Do you see that touch? Yeah, see, that's a difference a between the two Yeah, the two teams. We call that technical speed or technical skill. And for a, a punt to be handled so easily and mm -hmm. just drop like that, you know, that's taken her a lot of training. It's really impressive. Deadens the ball right in its tracks. There she goes again trying to steal it. Palmer Trinity trying to save face a little bit. 14 minutes to go. Pick it at midfield. Oh, what a great ball. What a great ball. There's a teammate right there, running it into the corner. 
That's a 40-yard ball in the air, <laughs> hit with underspin. Do you play golf, Kelly? Uh, no. Well, but, uh, <laughs> well, if you can hit the different spin on the soccer ball and get it to die so it doesn't go out of bounds, you're pretty talented. Pretty good. Wow, there's quarterbacks who can't throw it that can't throw it that far. Yeah. All right, here's the kick, and we're off and running again. Kelly enough, along with Teresa Patterson, former head volleyball coach at Steinbrenner High School, right here in Tampa, not far from the USF campus, as a matter of fact. Yep, just down the road, yeah, really. Yeah, just yeah, right <laughs> down there. Of course, here, you know, you talk about Leroy Selman, their school's namesake just passed away, so, but he, he was able to come to the dedication or see the dedication of the school? He was, um, and it was so touching. When our band performed our, um, the song that we, we, you know, we chose to be our, our school song, um, I, I'm not exaggerating, a little tear came to his uh, eye. So that. it was wonderful to, that he was able to be there for the dedication and, and wonderful for our school and our, our students to, to be able to, you know, to meet him. A lot of contact out there. Boy, I can see why Medina's the target. Did you see her hold the ball there? Yeah. <laughs> Under duress, so to speak, huh? <laughs> well, they're going to lose the ball out of bounds. You know what, with Derek Jeter living right in town, maybe you can get him to do something at the school. <laughs> well, we do have Yankees um, come out for our yeah. baseball team. Um, Posada threw out the first pitch. Yeah. And um, we actually, um, we don't get financial support because we're not allowed to be specialed out, uh, right. you know, like singled out. But, sure. um it certainly helped us to have that relationship with the Yankees organization, especially since they do their uh, spring training here oh, in town. Oh, sure. Sure, they're the bigger part of Tampa is the Tampa Bay Rays. They are. Yeah. There's that young lady, Mallory Bain, who really got them off to a good start in that first half with her first of two goals. Six goals for Country Day scored by three different people, none of which is their leading score on the season. Yeah, Bain, Bain has an um, impressive career ahead of her. I know Coach Pickett's excited that she'll be returning. Fernanda, uh, Fernanda Rojas with a good steal. But she loses the ball. And with under 12 minutes left. In 12 minutes, it looks like uh, Country Day is going to be able to celebrate another state championship. They're on the attack. Here comes the pass. And the shot is wide. You know, that run that Pickett made, um, she got behind, but she chose to, to gravitate towards her left. As she progresses in her career at the college level, if she were to cut the ball more centrally and give herself an option to shoot, um, that might be able to, um, you know, increase her effectiveness, so to speak. It looked like she yeah. was playing for the assist, though. Yeah, you know, yeah. Allie Wynn couldn't quite get it to go in. Very unselfish player, obviously. One of the traits, I'm sure, that college coaches look for you can be a team player rather than an individual player you know it's odd only in certain parts of the field <laughs> <laughs> you know you want your forwards to be a bit selfish right. <laughs> okay she so can't get to the ball there that's actually a weakness i actually heard um unc coach um give a great analogy when he compared girls to boys in their um their personality types he said give a basketball to two boys they'll play one-on-one -on -one. give it to girls and they'll play horse ah, you know okay. um so we really work hard as coaches to develop um that selfish personality in the okay. attacking third okay well, well that's probably the best place to do it now the ball will play the inbounds with under 10 and a half minutes left still a six to one country day lead we haven't seen a whole lot of penalties here have we no we really haven't yeah. And no cards at all. That's something for both squads to be proud of, I think. Yes. Here's the ball at midfield. Boy, old Palmer needs to get a little more aggressive. You know, I would like to see him try to link up some more passes because there's space on the field, especially um, in the flanks. Uh, the the Spartans are playing with three central midfielders. They leave that wide area open, but it seems like the Falcons, they'll link maybe one or two passes and then they look for the long ball. Oh, no. Well, and they're at midfield. Working. No. <laughs> at midfield here, trying to mount an attack. But it's broken up and taken by Lane Poquette for Country Day. Under nine and a half minutes left to go on the near sidelines. Of course, they'll have the medals and awards ceremony. Every player on the team will get a runner-up medal or a championship medal. There's Pickett. 
what an exciting time too to get to um, to receive your medals and that trophy for your school. And then the next thing you do is you go to the ball for man yeah. <laughs> on the representative and you design your ring because that's uh. what it's about. In the high school level, winning the ring. That's what all the athletes aspire to do. Yeah, you showed me your uh, ring. Very nice. Well, they do a good you. job engraving those things. They really do. We had to give our team two options. To they, you can't let a bunch of um, young women design their own rings. Oh, so yeah. we picked two. And then yeah, <laughs> picked two. Now, I didn't notice. Is the word Steinbrenner on there in its entirety? Um, no, it wouldn't fit. So yeah, I didn't think it would. Ring. Yeah. They stole this um, design from UNC, another ACC school. <laughs> I wouldn't think St. John's Country Day would fit on theirs either. <laughs> it's a lot of writing. Maybe the acronym. Yeah, maybe they just put the, just like the CD, and that's all they... Yeah put on there. Well, there's eight minutes to go. Still a 6-1 lead. Kelvin F. along with Teresa Patterson at the Class 1A Girls' State Soccer Championships. You know, a player I don't think gets a lot of credit um, is uh, the defenders, actually, um, Harding, who just made that run forward. She's real talented. But on this team that's so prolific in offense, you don't hear, you know, you don't right. see the stats for the defenders. Yeah. But These they girls get back here don't get a lot of attention, do they? No, and, and, and Coach Pickett acknowledges that and um, and certainly pointed out a certain, um, that his defenders were just as skillful as attacking players. Just as important, that's for sure. There's Weber trying to, and she gets the ball away. There's a defenseman right there, and she hits the deck. There's Pickett. Whoops, stepped right on top of the ball. Occupational hazard. Oh, now, wait a minute. Um, mid we saw Rojas find space in between the midfield and defense, but it just didn't materialize. Pick it once again. Pass. Oh, what a ball. The attack. What a ball. Oh, nice block. I would have liked to seen um, Chris try to serve that ball with her left foot in that situation. She got behind on the left side, but still that penetrating ball by Pickett um, was really special. She split the Falcons' defense with just one and two touches. In the Falcon offensive end, ball tapped away. And saved once again by the Spartans in midfield. Six and a half minutes left to go. Things looking bleak for Palmer Trinity. It was a good decision for Medina to play the ball to her midfielder. I'd like to see her make a run to get dangerous, though, after she releases the ball. Seems like she works real hard to receive the ball, and when she does combine, um, just that split second of being stationary makes her easier to defend. There they come. This looks good. Still in the zone as the ball will come into the net. Nope, just inside. Great save by Bailey Evans. Uh, it's a corner kick for the Spartans, but uh, she cut down the angle and was able to keep the ball going in near post. Did you say Bailey Evans has signed with somebody? Oglethorpe. Okay. Um, that's a that's a small. Uh, I think they're Division two or three, and they're um, in Atlanta. Real beautiful school. Uh -huh. High academics. See her right there, trying to get her teammates fired up and. Raring to go for the final five and a half minutes. As we have our corner kick. Oh, right off the head. That's good courage wow. by the Falcons defender there. Ooh. I can't feel good when that happens. You get hit right in the face with the ball. All right, here's the inbounds. There's Knocked Bain. almost right out of the bounce again. And the ref says play on. No foul. It was okay. all ball. So. All right. You think they've done a good job tonight? I do. You know, um, this might sound silly, but I always think a good official is like a good waiter. You don't want your waiter to take away from your meal, right? All right. So the official, his job is to maintain. Uh, great save. Oh, nice save. <laughs> what a great save by Evans. What a great save. Well, the official's job is to not get in the way of the flow of the game, but to, you know, make sure the rules are enforced. So if you don't notice the officials, they That's probably good. did a great job. That's what my brother, my brother's an official, has been for 40 years. And he says, if nobody knows who you are at the end of the game, if you can walk out of the gym and nobody recognizes you, then you did a good job. And you've done your job. But if you need a police escort, yeah. you can find a new profession, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If everybody's waiting outside your locker room, you're in trouble. Oh, oh. oh she couldn't get it. Another great ball in by Bain, and Megan Rogers finishes. Oh. I mean, again, again and again, the Spartans have done a great job of executing um, finishing crosses. 
they attack the end line and they organize their players in the 18 on sides. I mean, it's, you know, that's their game plan. It has to be their priority. You know, for Bailey Evans, that has to be, you have to feel sorry because she can see the ball getting by her and there's nothing she can do about it. She's, she can't dive fast enough to get to it. And here's the other thing. If the, um, if the attacker attacks on the flank, goes to the end line like um, we saw with uh, Mallory, uh, then everybody's on sides. So when the ball's angled back, everybody's on sides. And as a goalkeeper, you're covering the near post. It's your first responsibility, your footwork across. Uh -huh. You just got to hope that you're making the goal small enough for that forward. You know, it's, it's really, really. The reason that Coach Pickett chooses that as a point to execute is it's so tough to defend. We just saw the crowd from uh, Country Day, and actually a couple of them are actually sitting down by now. They don't do that much during the whole match, but a couple of them are sitting. <laughs> a couple, just a yeah. couple. <laughs> They're really into it, still into it. Under four minutes left. Seven to one, your championship final so far. And it may not be over. They may not be finished yet. Christ again on the left side. Let's see if she uses her left foot. Yes. <laughs> she made a correction from the last time she got behind. There we go. Nobody there. Ball brought back out again. This is Palmer Trinity, the Falcons in the navy blue. Into the Country Day offensive zone. Good defensive pressure by Medina. That limited the options for the Spartans, but they just weren't able to keep the ball. The Falcons were not able to do so. We have a good vantage point here right at midfield. Three minutes left. Here comes uh, Palmer Trinity. Into the front uh, front end of the uh, field. Oh, right at the block outside. Under two and a half minutes left to go. Here comes the offense for St. John's. That Rogers. is Megan Rogers. Yeah, Rogers done a great job all day getting um, getting behind on that right side. Just like Coach Pickett told me to watch. <laughs> yeah. He knows his players pretty well. I think he knew exactly what his game plan was going to be, and they, right at the start, they went into it, and they haven't deviated from it at all. No, they really haven't. Now, your game plan will change per opponent. So, obviously, he had, even though they're hours apart, he had some information about what to expect, probably from other coaches. I think so. Um, and they've been here before, and maybe that, you know, all that plays into um, his strategy to play aggressively from the start. I don't think this team switches their formation for many opponents with all the talent they have. It's almost like, you know, you bend to our will. Okay. Minute and a half to go. That's Saved by Evans again. That was number three, if I'm correct, um, Lane Poquette, and she's a defender. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's definitely getting into the attack as well. Well, you'll probably hear the Country Day fans just to our right start to count down the seconds here before too long. Oh, here's Medina getting in. Nope. Wow. McCurry came way out. Actually, that's Lauren Wiggins. Um, oh, the Spartans, they changed. Yeah, the Spartans made a goalkeeper change. We didn't catch it. It was kind of dangerous to come out that far, wasn't it? No. All right, we're under a minute to go. We're about to see a state champion crowned in Class 1A, girls soccer. There's a no. ball on top of the net. Again, Bailey Evans had it covered, but um, we've seen um, Mallory Bain shooting from distance all night, so it's only fitting with less than a minute left, she does it again. Okay, they're not gonna get much going here. They may not get anything going. There's only 23 seconds left. They're just gonna kick the ball off. As they count down the seconds, and this one is in the books. What a celebration. The Spartans have everything to be proud of. Every single player contributed today, um, from both goalkeepers to sixth graders. And um, their school certainly has something to hang their hat on with this state no. championship. 
Oh, Teresa, it's been great to work on the first game. We'll get a little break. Then we'll get your evaluation of what the 2A might hold in store. We'll do that in a few minutes. Well, thank you, Kelly. I look forward to that. All right. Final score again. You see it right there. St. John's Country Day winning the Class 1A state championship for the third time in the last seven years, beating Palmer Trinity 7-1 to with three goals from Megan Rogers, two goals from Mallory Bain, and two goals from Ellen Kristen. That's the championship right there. We'll take a break, and at 7.35, we'll be back for the 2A championship. That'll be between Jacksonville Bowles and American Heritage Delray coming up at 7.30. 7-1 the final. I'm Kelly Neff.
Caroline.
I will recognize the players from the team of the Camera one. Yeah. <laughs> 